Honored guests, families and friends, please take your seats. This being the time fixed for the beginning of the legislative session, the General Assembly of the State of New Jersey is now called to order to affect the organization for the conduct of its business for the first annual session of the 216th session. I will now read the certification of election. State of New Jersey Department of State Certificate of Election, Trenton, New Jersey. I, Kimberly M. Guadagno, Secretary of State and Chief Election Official of the State of New Jersey, do hereby certify that an election held on the fifth day of November 2013, the following persons were elected members of the General Assembly to represent the State of New Jersey in the 216th Legislature. District 1, Bob Andrzak and Sam Fiocchi. District 2, Chris Brown, Vincent Mazio. District 3, John J. Bersicelli, Celeste M. Riley. District 4, Paul D. Moriarty, Gabriella M. Mascara. Fifth, uh, Angel Fuentes and Gilbert L. Whip Wilson. District 6, Louis D. Greenwald, Pamela R. Lampett. Seventh, Herb Conaway, Troy Singleton. Eighth District, Chris Brown, Maria Rodriguez Gregg. Ninth, Brian E. Rump, Diane C. Gove. Tenth, Dave, David Wolf, Gregory P. McCucken. Eleventh, Mary Pat Angelini, Carolyn uh, Casagrande. Twelfth, Ronald S. Dancer, Robert D. Clifton. Thirteen, Amy Hanlon, Declan O'Scanlon. 14, Wayne D'Angelo, P. D'Angelo, Daniel R. Benson. 15, Reed Gasiora, Bonnie Watson Coleman. 16, Jack M. Citarelli, Donna M. Simon. 17th, Joseph V. Egan, Upendra Shivakula. 18th, Patrick J. Dignan, Jr., Nancy Pinkin. 19th, John S. Wisniewski, Greg J. Coughlin. 20th, Joseph Cryan, Annette Quijano. 21st, John Bramnick, Nancy F. Munoz. 22nd, Gerald Jerry Green, Linda Stender. 23, Eric Peterson, F. Parker Space. Uh, 24, Allison Littell McCose, F. Parker. F. Parker Space, I'm so sorry. It's Eric Peterson and John DeMeo. Forgive me, Assemblyman. 25th, Michael Patrick Carroll, Anthony M. Buco. 26th, Jay Weber, Betty Lou DeCroach. 27th, John F. McKeon, Myla M. Jacy. 28th, Cleopatra G. Tucker, Ralph Caputo. 29th, L. Grace Spencer, Eliana Pinter Marin. 30th, Sean T. Kane. David P. Ribel, 31st, Charles Maynard, Jason O'Donnell, 32nd, Vincent Prieto, Angelica M. Jimenez, 33rd, Carmelo G. Garcia, Raj Mukherjee, 34th, Sheila Y. Oliver, Thomas Giblin, 35th, Shavonda E. Sumter, Benji E. Wimberly, 36th, Gary Scher, Marlene Caridi, Gordon M. Johnson, 37th, and Valerie Veneri Huddle. 38th is Timothy J. Eustace, Joseph Lagana. 39 is Holly Shapizi and Robert Auth. 40th is David C. Russo, Scott T. Romana. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the members that have been elected to the 216th uh, New Jersey General Assembly. And if I've slaughtered anyone's name, please, Lord, charge it to the head and not the heart. Um, let us welcome Dr. Robert Burkus, who's the principal of Secaucus High School, to deliver the invocation. Please rise and join Dr. Burkus. The scriptures tell us that this is the day the Lord has made, and it's up for us to find reason to be happy and to rejoice in it. So whether you miss the exit on the turnpike, 
where you went around the circle four times, there's a reason to be glad that we're here today to celebrate the joy of Vincent becoming the House Speaker. During the month of December, we celebrated the holidays of Kwanzaa and Christmas, and um, Kwanzaa, Christmas, Hanukkah, and New Year's. The common denominator of those holidays is love and peace. As we begin and go into prayer, I'm going to ask each and every one of you right now to turn to each other and give each other a sign of peace with a handshake. Peace. There will be no collection. <laughs> Vinny has always been a man of hope. Vinny has always been a man of commitment, firm, disciplined, focused. In the morning when I'm running or walking, I will see he and his wife doing the same thing very early in the morning. I ask Vinny to take with him the spirit of hope, because hope and faith is what's going to carry us through. But you can't forget the 91-year-old woman who was never married and hoping that someday she would find a husband. And she had prayed and hoped that someday it would happen. And she went to bingo, and she saw this gentleman, a young stud, 93. They began a conversation. Before you know it, they started to date. Well, they got married, and they're now in their upper 90s, living down the shore, happily married. I haven't heard anything about children yet, but they're very happily married. <laughs> and you can't forget, Vinny, about the 87-year-old woman we have on 9th Street. She lost her husband 10 years ago, but she misses a companion. And her children have encouraged her to start dating. She felt kind of awkward. How do I go about doing it? And one day she went to the farmer's market. And when she went to the farmer's market and she's grabbing for the eggplant, there's a gentleman over there grabbing for the peppers. They had eye contact. And before you know it, they started a conversation. And it turned where they went in the parking lot, got to know each other. She found out he's 95, she's 87, but he asked her for a date. So her hope was fulfilled. The daughter was thrilled she's going to go on the date. But when the mom came home from the date, the daughter said, Mom, how'd the date go? You look rather upset. She says, upset? I had to smack him three times. Was he getting fresh with you? No, I thought he was dead. <laughs> Heavenly Father, look down upon all your servants here today. I ask you to bestow upon favor on Vinny as he goes into this new role. Help him take this assembly and let them be a model for all assemblies throughout the course of this country. There's something quite different about all of us here in New Jersey. Being a multicultural, diverse community, we all live together and work together as one family, for we know no other way. Teach him, guide him, direct him. Fill him with your love, your wisdom, your understanding. Help him in this new role where he has to continue in his role as husband, father, grandfather, speaker of the house. May he and all these people here today work for the common good of all the people in New Jersey. And we ask all this in your name, and everyone says, amen. amen. We thank Dr. Burkus for those inspirational words. <clears throat> I ask that you would please remain standing as the first 150 assault helicopter battalion led by commanding officer, Master Sergeant Kenneth Boudreau will now present the colors. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please remain standing for a performance by the Secaucus High School Concert Band.
Thank you very much. It's a wonderful rendition. As all of you in here today are very important to us and dignitaries in our lives in very special ways, I'd like to acknowledge some dignitaries who have had a statewide impact in New Jersey. I'd like to take a moment to welcome Governors Jim Florio, Governors Brendan Byrne, Governor Donald DiVincenzo. I would like to acknowledge uh, U.S. Congressman and former Speaker Albi Osiris, <laughs> former Speaker, speaker uh, Jack Collins, and former Speaker Joseph Roberts. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. The oath of office will now be administered to the newly elected members of the New Jersey General Assembly. Assem Assemblyman Samuel Fiocchi, Senior, District 1. Okay, Assemblyman. Please write, uh, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Samuel Fiocchi. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution that I will support the Constitution of the United States of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and I will bear true faith and allegiance and allegiance to the same to the same and to the governments established and to the governments established in the United States in the United States and in this state and in this state under the authority of the people under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully and I will faithfully discharge the duties discharge the duties of member of member of the general assembly the general assembly according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations assembly Ladies and gentlemen, from the second legislative district, Assemblyman Vincent Mazio. Raise your right hand. State your name after I I. I, Vince Mazio. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will, I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear and that I will bear true faith and allegiance true faith and allegiance to the same to the same and to those governments established in the United States and to those governments established in the United States and in this state and in this state under the authority of the people under the authority of the people and that I will and that I will faithfully faithfully discharge the duties discharge the duties of member of the general assembly member of the general assembly according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations <laughs> ladies and gentlemen from the 8th district assemblywoman maria rodriguez greg Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Maria Rodriguez Gregg. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to same. And allegiance to same. And to the governments. And to the governments. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of member of the General Assembly. Of member of general of the General Assembly. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> From the 18th District, Assemblywoman Nancy Pin 
Pinkin. Raise your right hand. Raise your hand. Sorry. Aye. Aye. Nancy Pinkin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear. That I will bear. True faith and allegiance to the same. True faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly the duties of member of the General Assembly according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God congratulations Representing District 35, Assemblyman Carmelo Garcia. I, Carmelo Garcia, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, true faith and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established in the United States, and to the governments established in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly, the duties of member of General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, so help me God. So help me God. Welcome to the Assemblyman Raj Mukherjee, uh, District Number Thirty Three, also. Raise your right hand. I. I. Raj Mukherjee. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. True faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly. The duties of member of the General Assembly. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Representing District 38, Assemblyman Joe Lagana. I, I, Joseph Anthony Lagana, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, true faith and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established in the United States, and to the governments established in the United States, and in this state, and in this state. Under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly, the duties of member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen from the 39th District, Assemblyman Robert Auth. Assemblyman, please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, Robert Joseph Auth. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And then I will bear true faith and I will bear true, true faith and allegiance and allegiance to same to same and to the governments and to the governments established in the United States established in the United States and in this state and in this state 
under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of member. Of member. Of the General Assembly. Of the General Assembly. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Assembly. Thank you. Well done. Welcome to the Will all other members please rise to take the office? For please raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly according to the best of my ability so help me God. So help me God. Nominations are now in order for a temporary chair. I recognize the assemblyman from Gloucester County, Assemblyman Bersicelli. Thank you. It is my honor to nominate Assemblyman Gary Scheer uh, of Passaic County. Thank you, Assemblyman. Assemblyman Wisniewski, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. Thank you, Assemblyman. If there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblywoman J.C. I move the nominations be closed. Thank you. Hearing no objections, so ordered. All those in favor of the nomination of the Assemblyman shares signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Congratulations, Assemblyman Chair. Resolution on the clerk's desk. General Assembly 2014 Organizational Resolution. Assemblyman Egan, why do you rise? I move to waive the reading of, by the clerk. Copies of the Assembly Organizational Resolution have been distributed to the members. Hearing no objections, all those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion passes. Assemblyman Shivakula, why do you rise? I rise to the resolution. Assemblyman Riley, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. On the resolution, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The resolution passes. Nominations are now in order. For the clerk of the assembly, I recognize Assemblyman Johnson from Bergen County. I nominate Dana M. Burley of the County of Camden to serve as clerk of the New Jersey General Assembly for the 216th session. Assemblyman Dignan, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. If there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblyman Gusioro. Move that the nominations be closed. Hearing no objections, so ordered. On the election of Dana M. Burley to serve as the clerk of the New Jersey General Assembly, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Assemblywoman Lampid will administer the oath of office to the clerk of the New, York, of the New Jersey General Assembly, <laughs> Dana M. Burley. Candidates in the house. Yes. I do solemnly promise. I do solemnly promise and swear, and swear that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all the duties, all the duties of the office of clerk. 
of the Office of Clerk. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability and understanding. And, understanding. and that I will carefully. And that I will carefully. Preserve all records. Preserve all records. Papers, writings. Papers, writings. Or property entrusted to me. And property entrusted to me. For safekeeping by virtue of my office. For safekeeping by virtue of my office. And makes disposition. And make disposition. Of the same. Of the same. As may be required by law. As may be required by law. Congratulations, Dana and Burley. Thank you. <laughs> Nominations for Speaker Tempore of the Assembly are now in order. I recognize Assemblywoman Stender from Union County. I proudly nominate Assemblyman Gerald Green of Union County to Speaker Pro Tem. Assem Assemblyman Giblin, why do you rise? Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. If there are no other nominations, the Chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblyman Moriarty. I move that the nominations for Speaker Pro Tem be closed. Hearing no objections, so ordered on the election of Gerald Green to serve as Speaker Tempore of the New Jersey General Assembly. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Okay. Assemblyman Prieta will now administer the oath of Speaker Pro Tempore to Assemblyman Green. I, Jerry Green, do solemnly promise and swear to follow, swear and promise that I will Faithfully, I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly perform all the duties, perform all the duties of the office of Speaker Pro Tem, of the office of Speaker Pro Tem, of the New Jersey General Assembly, New Jersey General Assembly, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and understanding, and understanding that I will carefully preserve, I will carefully preserve all records, all records, papers, papers, writings, writings, and properties entrusted to me, and properties entrusted to me for safekeeping, for safekeeping by virtue of my office, by virtue of my office, and that I will make such dispositions, I will make such dispositions of the of the same way, of the same way as I may be required by law as the same way I've been required by law, that I will support the Constitution, and I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will, and I will, bear true faith, true faith, and allegiance, and allegiance, to the same, to the same, and to the governments established, and the governments established, in the United States, in the United States, and in the state of New Jersey. In the state of New Jersey. Under the authority of the people. And the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Assemblyman Prieto will now administer the oath of office of majority leader to Assemblyman Lewis Greenwald of Camden County. Aye. I, Lewis David Greenwald, do solemnly promise and swear. Do solemnly promise and swear that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly perform all the duties. Perform all the duties of the office of majority leader. Of the office of majority leader of the New Jersey General Assembly. Of the New Jersey General Assembly to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability and understanding. And understanding that I will carefully preserve. That I will carefully preserve all records. All records. Papers. Papers. Writings. Writings and properties entrusted to me. And properties entrusted to me for safekeeping. For safekeeping by virtue of my office. By virtue of my office and that I will make such dispositions. And that I will make such dispositions as. Of the same, of the same, as I may be required by law, as I may be required by law, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear, and that I will bear true faith, true faith, and allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same, and to the governments established, and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Now we'll have the remarks from the Assembly Majority Leader, Lewis Greenwald. <laughs> Cut me out already. I see how it's going. Good. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are some unknown facts that take place on Reorganization Day. One of the little known facts is that Assemblyman Fiocchi and I are actually related by marriage. So. I have to admit, I feel a little guilty about some of those campaign commercials now, Assemblyman, so I... <laughs> this is set up also so that this is my section for the majority leader, and my section are Republicans, Democrats, and others. For those of you who want to know what I'm really about, you need to find the others over in this section here. But I thank them all for being here. There are some people who I wish were here and are not. A uh, long time ago, my mother and father passed away. And we miss them every day, but here today in their spirit, with their soul, is my friend, Judge Alan Vogelson and his wife, Sandy. And for those of you who don't know, Judge Vogelson swore my mother in for each elected office that she had, and I'm very honored to have them here with me today. Thank you. And our dear friend, Kevin Halpern, who was with us two years ago, and has been a tremendous role model for many of us and certainly in my life and someone who loved and shared these experiences and is not with us and has passed away recently, but his spirit as well is shared by his lovely wife Karen and Brett who are here today. I'd like to recognize sitting with us and my family is Governor Florio. Governor Florio, you have been, please applaud for. Governor Florio, for me personally and for everyone from South Jersey, you stand as a possibility that all things can come true. And I want to thank you for your service to the entire state of New Jersey. God bless you and your family. And finally, to uh, when I was elected at the age of 28, 18 years ago, you could not have been more fortunate to be a young person like myself. And I hope that maybe there are people here today behind me that can play the same role I was so fortunate to come to this assembly and have a remarkable mentor in my friend, Joe Roberts. Speaker Roberts, thank you for being here today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to stand before you today and I am deeply thankful for the privilege of being elected as the majority leader for the 216th legislature. I want to thank my family and my beautiful wife, Cindy. And our three children, Lauren, who can't be here today because she has a test, and my twins, Eric and Jenna, we've made sure our priorities are right. Um, your love and support sustains me each and every day. And I know in my heart, no matter what we tackle in Trent, no matter what we achieve, the most important titles that I will ever hold are husband and father. My, my wife and I just celebrated our 18th anniversary, and I can tell you that when we were first married, like most young couples, we had dreams, and like most young people, you dream big. I can tell you that every morning that I wake up next to you, all my dreams come true. Thank Aww. you for being a part of my life. That was nice, right? That gets me another two years till 2016. <laughs> I want to thank my colleagues as well, both the seasoned veterans in the, in the State House and the new faces that join our ranks today. Thank you for your commitment and your service. I look forward to working with you in the days and months ahead, and for many of you that have questions, I know that from myself and the speaker, we are a phone call away. I want to truly thank Sheila Oliver for the, her years of service as the Speaker of the General Assembly. During the past four years, New Jersey faced many difficult challenges. Sheila Oliver met each and every one of these challenges with the grace, the compassion, and the determination that is becoming of a great leader. She is truly what I would consider a regal woman. I am very blessed that she has become a friend in my life. And Sheila, thank you for all that you have done for me in the state of New Jersey. I also want to thank my friend Vinnie Prieto. Vinny and I became friends many, many years ago. We've enjoyed each other's company and we enjoy each other's stories about our families and his beautiful granddaughter that is here with us today. 
Vinny will take the oath of, of speaker today, and we have shared years of friendship working together to solve problems. I look forward to the continuing work and success that we've achieved in the past as Vinny leads the assembly in the best direction for New Jersey. Vinny, congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we face deeply difficult challenges in government, both in our state and in our nation. We hear cynical arguments that declare government itself is the problem, unable to accomplish good on behalf of the citizens or solve the problems that face their families. We see elected leaders shrink from the pressing issues of our times, embracing bumper sticker solutions and focusing on the next election instead of attacking these challenges head on. We feel outrage and disappointment in our hearts as some individuals forget that public service is a privilege, not a playground for political intimidation or personal agendas. Under these troubling circumstances, it would be easy to turn our heads away from the challenges we face and conclude they cannot be solved. I, it would be simple for us to give in to cynicism and shrink from the tasks at hand. But that is not who we are. We are from New Jersey, and when we face tough times, we grit our teeth, we roll up our sleeves, and we get to work. As a state, we have faced many obstacles that people said were unsolvable. We have fought for many issues that people said were ahead of their time. We weren't quite ready. But let us look how far we have come in just the last two years. Consider a young man, Giancarlo Tello of New Jersey, who has been a student in our state for 17 years. He was brought to this country with the promise of a better life, yet through no fault of his own, he faced severe barriers to his dream of a higher education and an economic opportunity. He earned a seat at Rutgers University through his hard work. But even though New Jersey was his home in every sense of the word, he was forced to drop out of Rutgers University because of the barriers that he faced. We took action as a state legislature and passed the New Jersey Dream Act. Today, the American dream is available to all students who have made New Jersey their home. While we must do more to ensure the affordability of these dreamers, for all of our students, one thing is certain. The New Jersey Dream Act will strengthen our economy, our culture, and our future. There is a couple here today that has joined us from our, disc, our district. Their name are Jimmy and Richie Madden. Bound together by love and commitment, they were forced to settle for a second-class citizenship. But we stood up to fight for the values of fairness and equal justice that our Constitution represents. We passed the first marriage equality bill in the history of this state. And because of this passionate fight, both in the legislature and in our courts, marriage equality is the law of the land today. What seemed impossible nearly a decade ago is now enshrined in law. Never again will families like Jimmy and Richie or thousands of families like theirs live in fear of being turned away at their spouse's hospital bed at a time when that family is needed more than ever. At this greatest time of need, they can be with each other because of the people that they choose to love. Consider a cancer patient in Vineland or Cherry Hill, much like my mother-in-law was a little over a decade ago. At that time, a patient like my mother-in-law would have been told to drive into Philadelphia for treatment. Some said there would never be a better option than driving over the Ben Franklin Bridge for medical care. But over a decade ago, in a bipartisan way, this legislature fought to make world-class cancer research facilities accessible to all residents of our state. People laughed at us. They said it wasn't necessary. They said it wasn't really going to solve the problem. People would still go to Philadelphia. But because we fought for this investment, the nation's top cancer research center, MD Anderson, came to New Jersey in the last six months in partnership with Cooper Hospital. Today, countless families facing the desperate realities of cancer now have a state-of-the-art facility right in their own backyard. And today, these families have hope, hope for a better life and hope for a cure. There, thank you. There were those who said that restructuring New Jersey's institutions of higher education to promote our economic future would be too difficult, but we came together in a bipartisan fashion to pass needed reforms. Today, we have strengthened our research universities, increased our dedication to the growing field of health sciences, and ensured we remain a leader in higher education in this nation. When tragedy stuck in Tucson, Aurora, and Sandy Hook, some said we could not enact new laws to reduce gun violence. 
Some said the NRA and its gun lobby allies were too strong to achieve real reform to protect our families. But where Congress failed in Washington, New Jersey again took action. From cracking down on illegal firearms trafficking to strengthening mental health background checks to focusing on school security, we passed common sense laws to prevent gun violence. And while we can still do more, we have shown the nation the blueprint for bipartisan change to save the lives and promote safer communities, all the while protecting the constitutional rights of our Second Amendment and the citizens that we represent. We've achieved all of this when it seemed unlikely, but we still have more work to do. Many of you have heard me talk about my mother, Maria Greenwald. She was an incredible woman, the most significant role model in my life. Thank you. Her love for her community was exceeded only by her determination to give the lives of the residents that she represented a better opportunity. In 1977, she became the first woman mayor of Cherry Hill. In her inaugural speech, she spoke of the crushing burden of property taxes. She lamented the terrible reality that property taxes were driving middle-class families out of our state and forcing citizens to choose between paying their bills and seeing their grandchildren grow up. We sit here today, 37 years later, and this burden remains just as threatening, just as daunting, apparently just as unsolvable. But let me be clear. Our single most important mission is to reduce the property tax burden that is smothering our middle class and destroying our state. The property tax burden is not a national crisis. It is singularly a New Jersey crisis. We have the highest property taxes in the nation. They are the highest by far. They will not be solved with 30-second sound bites or bumper, stick, bumper sticker slogans. Many of the problems our state faces have roots in that property tax burden, whether it is a lagging unemployment rate, a shrinking middle class, persistent budget shortfalls, or residents leaving our state in droves. These crises share the common culprit of property taxes. Property taxes are not a Democratic problem. They are not a Republican problem. Property taxes are a New Jersey problem. It is one we must dedicate ourselves to solving. I've spoken with Speaker Prieto and some of my Republican colleagues, and we agree. It is time to stop talking about property taxes and start doing something about property taxes. It's time to fix the property tax burden that is crippling our state. We will form a bipartisan task force to address this property tax crisis. This task force will evaluate solutions from fiscal policies used by other states. We will draw from the best practices of 49 other states to propose solutions that will work best for New Jersey. My hope is that we will present these solutions to the voters, allowing them to choose among a menu of options to reduce their property taxes and have a hand in their own fate their own future and the recovery of this state. This is not something new. It has been done in other states, others that have gone before us and we're not afraid to face these challenges. Some will say the challenge of property taxes is too big to be solved. Those people are obstructionists. They are in our way. But from the senior citizens living on a fixed income to the college graduate looking at a start to a career to the middle class parents that hope their children will have the same opportunities that they had. New Jersey families deserve nothing less. Ladies and gentlemen, it is easy to work to identify a problem, and it is even easier to complain about the problem in front of us. The gift of public service, the service to others, is not only to identify the problem, but to work tire tirelessly and passionately to find its solution, to go where people believe it is unthinkable. There is much work to be done. We have just started. Let us join together. Let us do the unthinkable and prove the cynics wrong. Let us attack New Jersey's property tax crisis once and for all. Let us always remember that if we live in the past, we can never change our future. Thank you, God bless you, and may God continue to bless the great state of New Jersey. Thank you. Assemblyman Prieto will now administer the oath of office to Minority Leader to the Assembly, John Bramnick of Union County. I, I John Bramnick, do solemnly promise and swear, do solemnly promise and swear, 
that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly perform all the duties of the office, perform all the duties of the office of minority leader of the General Assembly, of minority leader of the General Assembly, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and understanding, and understanding that I will carefully reserve, that I will carefully preserve. All records, papers, all records, papers, writings, writings, and properties entrusted to me, and property entrusted to me, for safekeeping by virtue of my office, for safekeeping by virtue of my office, and make such dispositions of the same, and make such dispositions of the same, as I may be required by law, as I may be required by law, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith, and I will bear true faith, and allegiance, and allegiance, to the same, to same, and to the governments established, and to the governments established, in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Speaker. Appreciate it. Minority Leader John Bramnick will say, Few remarks. <laughs> Good afternoon. First, let me compliment the speaker. He had Dr. Bob Burkus do the invocation. He was not only a principal, a clergyman, and a comedian. And I would easily move to have him be a regular uh, person doing invocations in this chamber for this year. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Majority Leader, Conference Leader Rival, fellow New Jerseyans, we can all agree on one thing, and that New Jersey is a special place to live and work. We have it all. We have the Jersey Shore, we have mountains, dynamic cities, beautiful countryside, the arts, culture, and the most interesting politics in the history of the modern world. <laughs> Maybe the new motto for the state of New Jersey should be, there's never a dull moment in New Jersey. <laughs> Unfortunately, politics can sometimes take center stage and trump public policy. We probably all agree that politics is much more exciting than policy and tedious drafting of legislation. But I was reminded recently during a visit to Long Hill Township where the fourth grade studies state government. And during the course of this discussion, a teacher came up to me and said, one of the fourth grade young girls would like to speak to you alone after you speak, happy to do it. The young girl comes up to me and says, Mr. Assemblyman, can you help my daddy get a job? Moments like that serve to remind us of how important public policy is. Today and for the next two years, we are charged with the day-to-day -day responsibilities of government, which includes keeping the people of our state safe, making sure our economy flourishes, and educating our children. The past two years have demonstrated that members of this body can work on a bipartisan basis and achieve historic reforms. Those reforms included property tax caps, pension and health benefit reforms, tenure changes, all while reducing the size of government and increasing the funding to education to historic highs. I want to personally thank Speaker Sheila Oliver, who served with class, elegance, and strength. And to senior leaders in my caucus, Rival, Romana, and Assemblyman O'Scanlan. And I appreciate and am truly humbled by their uh, support of my position as minority leader. Now, I'm very optimistic, optimistic about New Jersey's future and the new leadership of my friend, Vinnie Prieto. He's a man of honesty and sincerity and a former weightlifter. 
and he's got some heavy lifting ahead. As minority leader, I pledge to you, Mr. Speaker, that I will not allow us to fall victim to the environment that plagues Washington, D.C., marked by partisan bickering and rhetoric that rejects compromise at all costs. I am always concerned and baffled by the cable news networks that are so partisan that they can never admit the other side of the aisle ever had a good idea. Those media outlets are driven by ratings and by advertising revenue, and that should never be the goal of this body. The media should not drive policy, we should. I understand that it's not easy with the evolution of social media where anonymous cyberspace critics taunt lawmakers every move and where the media wants instant reactions to every comment 24 hours a day. That is not thoughtful debate and we should reject it. We all know that during the next two years, we need to make New Jersey more competitive to retain and attract new business and create high paying jobs. We need to reduce the taxes on the hardworking people of New Jersey. And I'm asking the speaker to post and pass a tax cut for all New Jerseyans in the first full session of the state legislature. But today, we begin with cooperation and unity for a common purpose. And I will end by hoping we can follow the infamous words of Rodney King from 1992. Can't we all just get along? Thank you. Nominations are now in order for Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly. I recognize Assemblywoman Marlene Caridi of Bergen County. Good afternoon, Assemblyman Prieto, Majority Leader Greenwald, Minority Leader Ramnick, Speaker Oliver, our dignitaries, our distinguished guests, family and friends. Assemblyman Prieto and I have been friends for over 20 years and our family have known each other longer than that. When I was asked to introduce him, I was honored and thrilled to be given an opportunity to share with you a little insight about my friend. Vinny, as he's affectionately called by all his friends, is a hard worker who understands that goals can be accomplished if we apply ourselves. He understands that challenges can be conquered with the help of the most unlikely allies as long as we're willing to ask for help. He understands that to be a good public servant, we have to know how to reach across the aisle in the spirit of bipartisanship for the good of the people of New Jersey. This is something that Vinny has been doing during his tenure here in the Assembly. He's an individual who always finds the time to speak with you, and if he doesn't have the answer, like he likes to say to you, he will circle back to you with an answer. He is loyal, he's a man of his word. He always welcomes you with a smile. It's very difficult not to like Vinny Prieto. However, don't let his mild manner fool you. If he has to roll up his sleeves and stand his ground, he'll do it. He's shown us that when he negotiated the budget. Vinny is a proud citizen of the United States by choice, but he is Cuban by birth. At the age of 10 and a half, Vinny was brought to the United States by his mother from Cuba when Cuba fell to communism. With his mother as a wonderful role, and with the help of friends and family here in the United States, he applied himself in our public school system, and he worked hard to succeed. Along the way, though, he made sure to help those that were less fortunate. That was his way of paying back those that helped him when he first came to this country struggling. By the time he was in his late 20s, he opened up his first, well, actually, he opened up his business, Joven Plumbing. 
He married his high school sweetheart and he started his family. Today, Vinny is a loving father, a loving husband, and recently, a grandfather. Some would say, and I would agree, that Vicente Prieto has achieved what we all hope to achieve, the American dream. But he has used life's lessons um, and his personal character to get him through this. He will continue to work hard for the betterment of the residents of the state of New Jersey, and I am confident that my colleagues, both Republicans and Democrats, will find that Vinny will honor this house and work with dignity. Vinny has overcome and faced numerous challenges, and in each of those challenges, he has faced them with dignity, with courage, and with strength. I am proud to call him my friend, and today, I am proud to nominate Assemblyman Vicente Prieto of Hudson County as Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly. Assemblyman Jimenez, why do you rise? I second the nomination. If there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblyman Conaway. I move that nominations be closed. Hearing no objections, so ordered. On the election of Assemblyman Vincent Prieto as Speaker of the New Jersey General Assemblyman. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Andrew Zach. Ms. Angelini. Yes. Mi Mr. Off. Yes. Mr. Benson. Yes. Mr. Bremnick. Yes. Mr. Buca. Mr. Bergicelli. Yes. Mr. C. A. Brown. Yes. Mr. C. J. Brown. Yes. Mr. Caputo. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Casagran. Yes. Mr. Shivakula. Mr. Chitarelli. Yes. Mr. Clifton. Yes. Mr. Conaway. Yes. Mr. Coughlin. Yes. Mr. Cryan. Yes. Ms. Caridi. Yes. Mr. Dancer. Yes. Mr. D'Angelo. Yes. Mr. Crouch. Yes. Mr. Dagnan. Yes. Mr. DeMaio. Yes. Mr. Egan. Yes. Mr. Eustace. Mr. Fiocchi. Yes. Mr. Fuentes. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Ms. Grove. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Greenwald. Yes. Mr. Giblin. Yes. Mr. Gassiora. Yes. Ms. Jacy. Yes. Ms. Jimenez. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Keene. Mr. Lagana. Yes. Ms. Lampett. Yes. Mr. Maynor. Yes. Mr. Mazio. Yes. Mr. McGuckin. Yes. Ms. McCose. Yes. Mr. McKeon. Yes. Mr. Moriarty. Yes. Ms. Mascata. Yes. Mr. McCurgy. Yes. Ms. Munoz. Yes. Mr. O'Donnell. Yes. Ms. Oliver. Mr. O'Scanlan. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Ms. Pinkin. Yes. Ms. Pinter Marin. Yes. Mr. Prieto. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Kiana. Yes. Mr. Rival. Yes. Ms. Riley. Yes. Mr. Romana. Yes. Mr. Rumpf. Yes. Mr. Russo. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez Gregg. Mr. Scher. Yes. Ms. Sapizi. Yes. Ms. Simon. Yes. Mr. Singleton. Aye. Ms. <laughs> Mr. Space. Yes. Ms. Spencer. Yes. Ms. Stender. Yes. Ms. Sumter. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Ms. Veneri Huddle. Yes. Ms. Watson Coleman. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Mr. Wimberly. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Wisniewski? Yes. And Mr. Wolf? Yes. 
motion passes. Nominee Posen passes. Affirm. At this time, the Honorable Stuart Rabner, Chief Justice of the New Jersey Supreme Court, will administer the oath of office of Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly to Assemblyman Vincent Prieto. I, I, Vincent Prieto, do solemnly promise and swear, do solemnly promise and swear, that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly, perform all the duties, perform all the duties of the office of speaker, of the office of speaker, of the New Jersey General Assembly, of the New Jersey General Assembly, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and understanding, and understanding, that I will carefully preserve, that I will carefully preserve all records, all records, papers, papers, writings or property, writings or properties, and Trusted to me, entrusted to me for safekeeping, for safekeeping by virtue of my office, by virtue of my office, and make such disposition, and make such dispositions of the same, of the same as may be required by law, as may be required by law, that I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, and to the governments, and to the government. Established in the United States, established in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, the Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly, Vincent Prieto. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. It's with great honor, and I'm so humble to have been chosen by the members of this body to lead this body. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, friends, family, for everybody on this stage, I want to express the gratitude to the residents of the state of New Jersey for the trust that they put upon us. And the one thing I can say is we won't let you down. I have notes here, but I normally, if anybody that knows me, I don't particularly like them too much. I like to talk from, from my heart. Um, I, gotta, I gotta tell you, uh, there's people here that I wanna acknowledge, but I wanna first start, when I first came to this body in 2004, Albio Series, uh, a great leader, and I'm so honored to be the second Cuban American to lead this house, my friend. want to take time with that it takes you know to learning from great people and speaker roberts i learned tremendously from you uh you were a great leader and i was proud to serve with you and i'm so happy to be able to call you my friend speaker roberts since i'm going in that line i am so honored to follow somebody that has left a historic mark on the state of new jersey that served during some difficult times the last four years with great grace, passion, and it's unbelievable the accomplishments that she did. And I'm so proud, and I said it yesterday, to call her not a friend only, she's a colleague and ally, but she is truly, truly a wonderful human being. My friend, Sheila Oliver. Times like this is the times that, you know, we're here, it's happy, we have to get a lot of work, but there's a lot, of, a lot that I do 
that comes from, you know, my home life that I put out sometimes. So sometimes I don't get to say it enough, and I know she's going to kill me, but I want to first start by acknowledging the person that has been the love of my life, my childhood, you know, my childhood high school sweetheart. Um, she puts up with me. She is probably, Vinny's probably the product of Marlene because she's the one that keeps me grounded and is the one that makes me be who I am, the person that I do uh, run things by, the person that I can confide in, and I can truly call her my best friend. Marlene, thank you for putting up with me all these years. <laughs> to both my children, Amanda and Vincent, we're so proud of you. You've become hardworking adults. And it's amazing, it almost seems like yesterday that you were uh, in diapers, uh, both of you. So it's amazing to see what wonderful young uh, adults you have become. We're very, very proud of you. And <laughs> with our new son, Michael, uh, and my daughter have blessed us with uh, our first grandchild, uh, Peyton Rose. And that is an amazing thing. Um, grand grandparenthood, it's amazing. Me and Marlene love it every day. We want to see her every day. So that's our life. This, that nucleus is what I strive for to make New Jersey a better place for them. I am blessed here to be my, my brother took the, the long trip up from, uh, from Miami, so for me it's great. Him and uh, his son, Robert, that I saw grow up here before they kind of were smarter, went to a better climate uh, down south and left me up here. Uh, but it's great to see him and Robert with his beautiful uh, family uh, is here today. And for me it means a lot. Mi hermano, te quiero. I love you, my brother. I'm not long on speeches, so this will probably be the most. Uh, I want to keep going along that theme. There's, there's another person here that I want to acknowledge also. Uh, my brother-in-law, Joel Rodriguez. Um, Joel Rodriguez and I opened the business together. Uh, he still runs that business. It still exists. Uh, incredible in these tough times. And he and I spend more time together than we did with our wives when we were struggling to get this business up and running. We were there starting, it was actually seven days a week operation, then cut it down to six. And he's still plugging at it. He is probably the only person that's probably in this building that ever thought of me in politics. So it's incredible that I guess he had the idea. I never thought of it, and I think I always took from him. Uh, one of the things that uh, it's incredible, we spend all that time together, even though I'm a Democrat and he's a Republican. <laughs> um, so I, I thank him so much for, for all that he has uh, been and meant to me through all these years. Um, there, there's a, few, a couple of people that are not here with us and that have been an impact in my life, and actually Marlene's and Joel's uh, father. He was like a father to me. He's a man that I miss every day. He's a man. He was important to my wife and me. I, uh, he was like a father to me here. It's incredible how much you can learn from a human being. And when you can talk about a person that was a good person, that's a person that I, I admire. He was a role model for me. And it's been sad to have missed them. Um, he passed away in 2007, and he meant a lot to me. Uh, the other person that is missing for me, that of great magnitude, was my mother. My mother was a lady, a very strong lady, a lady that uh, raised four children. The span of their ages was uh, uh, kind of far. I'm the youngest of four, four brothers. She had me later in life. I always tell everybody I think she was looking for a girl and got me. Uh, so she, she cared deeply, and my older brothers were uh, a bit older than me, and she tried to give me a better life. She really put upon herself to see if bring me to the United States that I can 
witness and be part of the American dream. That was all in her life what she wanted to do. So she brought me to this country. Uh, I want to just touch upon there's there's a couple of other individuals here, and I and I could go for everybody, but there's two two personal friends that I just want to mention. One of them is uh, Joey Muniz and Steve Katuna, that they help me so much in what I do today. It helps me be able to balance a little bit of my life, so I want to thank them for their their help too. It's, it's interesting in times like this that we should be up here and reflecting where we came from. And as I started to say, my mother brought me to this country at the age of 10. It took us about five years to get out of Cuba during the freedom flights that brought 265,000 uh, Cubans, uh, you know, fleeing the communist country of Cuba's um, that that was really tough. During those first 10 years of my life, I experienced things that were amazingly bad. And coming here was a culture shock. It was an experience, a happy and joyous, but it was scary at the same time. We actually uh, located in Union City in a, in a two room basement apartment. But what I do today, as a code official, I can definitely tell you it was an illegal apartment. <laughs> the heat was overhead only, so it was kind of difficult, and it was it was something interesting. But my wife, my mother, taught me that you can persevere anything, and as long as you hard work, educate yourself, and have your word as your bond. She always says, "Have your word. That nobody can take away from you." She instilled in me in that, and that to today, that's the way I am. My word is my bond. From, from that apartment, I started trying to, to help out as much as I could. Little odd jobs as I was going to school after time. And I always told the story, and I know uh, a lot of times my wife probably doesn't want to hear it. I, I got... Um, uh, there was a gentleman trying to do a roof on a building where we lived, and there were 90-pound rolls of uh, roofing paper. And uh, he said, I'll give you a dollar to take him up. But little Vinny was probably not 90 pounds, so I tried, got about five of them, and then I went back to him because I was honorable, and I said, listen, I can't complete the job. I said, you don't have to pay me, but thank you so much for the opportunity. And he never paid me, but I learned... <laughs> I, I learned from that that you don't take on something you can't. And I think probably that moment is what took me into bodybuilding. I said, I got to get stronger and bigger. <laughs> but those, it's not just about that. You, you have to educate yourself. Do the right thing. And I got a, I've been blessed with a wonderful family and opportunities. And by hard work, I have at every level been able to move on to the next level. And when I talk to kids at schools, that's the one thing I instill in them. I always tell them, I was the guy in the back probably not paying attention, but I said, you can do it. You can make a difference. And these young people from my hometown that are here, I tell them that the sky's the limit. It's very important. Saying all that, as I said, my word is my bond. I want to make sure and emphasize uh, going off of what the majority leader talked about. My thoughts in this coming session are so important that property taxes are the number one issue absolutely here. Since I came here, they were the highest in the nation. They're still the highest in the nation. We have to do something about them. We, ha we have done many things to put in place to curtail their rate of growth. Still, they've been growing. And they've been crushing the middle class and the poor of the state of New Jersey. And that's unacceptable. We have to bring in experts to let us know what other states are doing. You know, things might work, things might not, but we have to have an honest, open dialogue. Going around the fringes and not doing anything, that's not my style. We have to do something. It is time to stop the property tax burden that is crushing the middle class and poor of this state. And I promise you, we will do that.
The minority leader talked about a tax cut. That's the tax cut I would like. And we really have to have an honest conversation, and it has to be a property tax cut. So that is very important to me. Based on that, you look at the U.S. Census, and 1.35 million residents of the state of New Jersey live in the poverty rate. That's unacceptable. We have to take a closer look at that. That's something important. That's 15% of the residents of this state. The Assembly has always been a leader in creating jobs, making more affordable housing, and we're going to have to keep trying to do that as the economy gets better, be innovative, and do the right thing. Better jobs, to me, would include earned sick leave. That earned sick leave is something that a lot of people don't want to talk about, and I know it's difficult for the businesses. As I said, my brother-in-law and I ran a business. He still has it. It's difficult, but we need to have an honest, open dialogue, see how we can get this done, because when somebody is facing, facing an illness and the choices are staying home and losing their job or going into work sick, that's not an option because then you don't become a productive worker and then you may even lose your job. And that feeds into that poverty that we can't, we can't allow. So that's another thing we have to tackle. One thing that I think we've gone away from in recent years is vocational education. And that, for me, is very close to my heart. Some of my friends from the building trades are here, and I think vocational education is a focus of something I really want to do, because I know what that could be. I know the opportunities that we can give our kids that may not be ready for college, or college may not be the right choice for them. We spend, in K through 12, hundreds of thousands of dollars preparing these kids, and then after, if college is not an option, where do they go? Unemployment line, unacceptable. We need to work on that. I think that's something that we can work together with the community colleges, to apprenticeship schools, and we can make that something that in the 21st century, it comes back. The economy will get better, jobs will be there, you can make a great living. That's something we need to do. Also, talked a little bit about college. College tuition, we need to look at. We need to go back and try and do the study commission to see how we can make college more affordable. As we spend hundreds of thousands, we get the smartest, the brightest, but then they have a problem. How do you afford it? Tuition aid, we need to do a better job with that. Tuition aid is the vehicle that these kids have to be able to get that college education. And then when they get loans and come out, they have terrible debt. So it becomes unattainable. We tell them you can do anything you want, but then they can't because it becomes unaffordable. So we got to help you out with that. So that's another focus that I, I want to do. And probably one of the last things I'll leave you with is I've, I've been from the 10 years that I've been in the assembly, I've been uh, championing to adoptees to obtain their birth certificates to be able to get medical records. It's incredible, something we take for granted that we know our history, where we come, something that can help us for preventive medicine. These people do not have that right. We've heard so many heartwarming stories, people that have come to me, that they want to get this done. I, I know Assemblyman Wolf has been the co-sponsor with me, and we're going to try and move that this year and make it a reality, make it the law, and I hope that that's something that I can get accomplished. You've heard a few of my talk thoughts that I have for this coming session. I look for, to working with all my colleagues behind me, both sides of the aisle. I normally always say this room for compromise. As I said it a million times, great bills don't work in Trenton. Good bills everybody can live with. So I, I am looking forward to working with both the Senate and the governor's office to make sure that we make New Jersey an even better place to live. I want to thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you again.
Please stand. <laughs> Maya Reyes from the Secaucus High School Concert Band. Please remain standing. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Speaker Prieto, Majority Leader Greenwald, and all of the members of the 216th New Jersey General Assembly, I want to thank you for joining us here today. Reverend Carl E. Stiles, Senior Pastor of Bethel Methodist Church in Camden, will conclude our ceremonies with a prayer. Reverend Stiles. Let us pray. The task that the electees have chosen. Today we leave a blessing with them, leading with the center of their hearts of Christ. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the words of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and warning one another to be thankful, for he has given you a heart to meet the needs of those that are less fortunate and to meet the needs of the state of New Jersey. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and give thanks through him to God the Father. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his spirit to shine upon you and be gracious to you all. May he lift up his smile upon you 
and all the citizens of the state of New Jersey and give us all peace, we ask in his name. And everyone said, amen. Mr. Speaker, with your permission, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this historic day. Good afternoon.